So this PowerPoint contains few common questions and answer that frequently asks in NPLEX board exam. And this gives few tips on how to answer the questions that likely to be asked in NPLEX board. All of these questions in this PowerPoint already came out in previous year's question, year exam question. The first question here, a nurse, health nurse is visiting a home care client with a advanced lung cancer. Upon assessing the client, the nurse discovered the wheezing and bradycardia. And also a respiratory rate is 10 beat per minute. This sign is associated with which condition? Number one, hypoxia, delirium, hyperventilations, and semi-consciousness. The examiner asking the question about the advanced lung cancer, right? So cancer that is begin in the cell of lungs and it occurs difficulty, the breathing or patient complain coughing, right? Or sometimes cough with blood and chest pain, hoarseness of voice or also weight loss. This is the sign of lung cancer. After examination of the patient, we found patient has a wheezy, head is sound. Also, bradycardia. Respiratory rate is 10 beat per minute, so it is slow. So our lungs does not work well. Definitely, there are four options. Number four, semi conscious or number two, delirium is not an answer, nothing related to the this patient. Number three, hyperventilations. This patient is a 10 beat per minute. It's, it is not a hyperventilated, right? Bradycardia, respiratory rate is low. Wheezing means patient are struggling for the oxygen. So tissue get less oxygen. What is correct answer? They said hypoxia means tissue get few oxygen, less oxygen. So in this picture, we can see this is the tumor inside the lungs, the cancer mass, cancer tissues, right? So how we diagnose this kind of patient? Diagnosis, including physical examination and medical history. Basically, if you ask me the treatment, the treatment involved the surgical management or chemotherapy and also radiation therapy. Rational said, as the re respiratory center in the brain becomes depressed, the hypoxia occurred and producing wheezing, bradycardium, and a decreased respiratory rate. Delirium is a state of mental confusion characterized by disorientations to the time and place. Hyperventilation is the markedly by an increased respiratory rate or tidal volume or both. Semi-consciousness is a state of impaired consciousness characterized by limited motor and verbal response and also decrease the orientations. Before to go next questions, I want to share what are the nursing care for advanced lung cancer patient. So nursing care for the patient with lung cancer revolves around the comprehensive supportive care and patient teaching can minimize 
that complications and speed recovery from surgical management. Also, radiation or chemotherapy. So next question, a nurse is developing a teaching plan for a client with asthma. Which teaching point has the highest priorities if your patient have an asthma? Number one, avoid contact with the flu bearing animal. Number two, change the filter on the heating and air conditioning unit frequently. Number three, take ordered medications as schedule. Also, avoid the goes down pillow. So asthma patient. So asthma is a lung disorder characterized by narrowing the airway. That also the tubes which carry the air into the lungs that are inflamed and also constricted and causes the shortness of breath, wheezing and cough. In that scenario, what are the most or highest priorities out of these four? Correct answer is take the ordered medication as schedule, right? So rational said, although avoiding contact with the flu bearing animals or changing the filter on heating and air condition unit frequently and avoiding the goose down pillow are all appropriate measure for the client with asthma. Taking order medication on time is the most important measure to preventing the asthma attack. Before to go next phase, I want to share about the asthma patient care plan, right? So it is important nursing care plan for asthma patient. As you know, asthma is a chronic inflammatory lung disease and that causes the airway hypersensitivity or mucus production and also mucosal edema resulting in reversible airflow obstruction, allergent air pollen, pollen or cold weather or physical exertion or strong odor and medication are common predisposing factor for asthma. So it is always important educate your patient to avoid all kind of trigger agents, right? So nursing care plan goals for asthma focus to preventing the hypersensitivity reactions, also controlling the allergent, maintaining the airway patency and preventing the occurrence of reversible complications, right? So first of all, we have to go for ineffective breathing pattern, right? Ineffective uh, ear, earway clearance. Also, it is important to educate your patient about the disease. It is good, tell them not to get angry or anxiety. Activity intolerance, also health uh, looking behavior or prevention of asthma attack is very important. Here we can see the first picture, a children taking the inhaler or ebohaler, but it is not a accurate or correct way to inhale. In this picture, we can see the baby use a device and then using inhaler, right? This is the method of use. So 
first of all take a deep breath then blow out hand and first hard and first and then we could breathe hold for a few minutes this is the device we can see it is called peak flow meter so peak flow meter has a three different colors red yellow and green so patient using the peak flow meter first of all take a deep breath blow out hard and fast inside this peak flow meter and then see where the marking going and touch is it in red color is it in yellow or it is touch the green color so if the indicator touch the green color means you are okay you are safe if it is yellow color it means you need some precursor if you take good medication management it should be pick to the green color if you neglect it if you do not take medication if you avoid exposure to trigger materials it will go to the red zone the red zone is danger sign right so peak expiratory flow rate can indicate what are the condition of your lungs so we use the peak flow meter used to assessment the severity of wheezing in those who have asthma and peak flow meter measure how quickly a person can exhale air from the lungs here is few more explanation i want to read with you if indicator at the green zone the asthma care plan no coughing no wheezing just tightness or difficulty of breathing absence can work can play can exercise and perform usual activity without any symptoms patient do not have any complaint of symptoms they can do their daily activities and peak flow meter indicator supposed to vary to 100% so you see the marking there this one and enjoy your day so if it is the yellow zone patient may be coughing patient may be wheezing chest tightness and difficulty of breathing symptoms with daily activities like work plan and exercise the nighttime awakening with the symptom is a very common sign of asthma also peak flow meter supposed to 50 to 100% so call your doctor if you are in yellow zone because you need some precursor you need advice to prevent the acute exacerbation of chronic asthma if it is in the red zone means it you are under danger risk difficulty of breathing patient complain coughing patient complain wheezing or not helped with a medication so travel walking travel to talking due to the asthma symptoms not responding to quick relief medication also peak flow is less than 50% and call the doctor is emergencies what are the next question so a physician determined that a client has been exposed to someone with tuberculosis the nurse expect the physician to order quiz treatment so number 1 daily oral doses of isoniazide and rifampin for 6 month to 12 years number 2 isolate until 24 hours after ntv therapy begins number 3 nothing until sign of active disease arises number 
daily doses of isoniazide, 300 milligram for six months to one year. The correct answer is daily doses of isoniazide, 300 milligram for six months to one year. So in this picture, we can see healthy lungs. In this picture, we can see lung affected with mycobacterial tuberculosis. So this is the organism, mycobacterium TB, or tuberculosis bacteria. Sometimes when TB attacks to the lungs, patients do not have any sign and symptom. We call latent infections. Sometimes it is active, like KVT formation, KVD tuberculosis, and million this scattered this all over the lungs, right? So tuberculosis, it is very important to take the proper medication. So with proper medication and care is important. The tuberculosis can be cured if you take proper and complete your course of medications. So tubercular bacteria will be cultured and their sensitivity are analyzed to determine the accurate course of the treatment. Often a combination of therapy is required for severe several months in case resistant to the drugs, also higher order of antibiotics needed, or even intravenous antibiotic will be required. Also multi-drug resistant TB is harder to treat. So what are the rational? All client exposed to persons with tuberculosis should receive prophylactic isoniazide in daily doses of 300 milligram for six months to one year to avoid the deteriorate effect of the latent mycobacterium TB. Daily oral dose of isoniazide and rifampin for six months to two years are appropriate for the client with active tuberculosis. Isolation for two to four weeks, not 24 hours, is warranted for a client with a active tuberculosis. So what are the next question? So here we go, a client who has just had a triple lumen catheter placed in the right subclavian vein, complain of chest pain and shortness of breath. So you see, this is the subclavian artery and inserted the catheter. If the catheter has a thick opening or channel, we call triple lumen catheter. Right. So his blood pressure is decreased from baseline and auscultation of his chest, the nurse noted unequal breath sound. A chest x-ray is immediately ordered by the physician. What diagnosis should the nurse suspect it? Right. So first of all, here, they said pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, heart failure, or pneumothorax. So this is the catheter pushing through the subclavian artery, maybe chance of rupture of the lungs and get the ear inside. Common um, side effect of catheter insertion. And patient also complain shortness of breath, blood pressure drop, or sculpted his lungs, and unequal breath out. 
right? So it is the subclavian catheter. So a catheter is a tube system, you see, tube inserted into the body as part of the medical treatment. A subclavian catheter may be placed into the subclavian vein if a patient need. If you ask me why we use it, we use it for medication, for nutrition, right? So, so also we use this one for dialysis, very important. So here we say pneumothorax. The correct answer is pneumothorax. So what is pneumothorax? So pneumothorax means air inside the sural space or collapse of the lung. You see the lungs is shorter, smaller. Pneumothorax closed, open. There are no fract uh, fracture is here. And here is a fracture and lungs is collapsed, also known as collapsed lungs. And here the air push the pressure and it is deviated to the opposite side, we call tension pneumothorax. So a collapsed lungs that occur when air enter inside the scural cavity, the space around the lungs. This causes the pain in the chest, also difficulty of breathing, right? So first of all, what are the rationale? So pneumothorax here in the scroll space is a potential complication of all central venous access device because our patient took the subclavian catheter, right? Like here, subclavian catheter. So why we use subclavian catheter? Sometimes subclavian line, we can keep for a long, but right? Because directly admin the fluid or medication into subclavian vein. So sometimes patient develop infection. So in prevention, the infection is the most priorities. So what they said, sign and symptom indicate chest pain, dyspnea, so, shoulder or neck pain, irritability, palpitations, light headache, hypotension, or cyanosis, decrease oxygen, unequal breath sound. A chest X-ray shows the collapse of affected lungs that result from pneumothorax. You see, collapse lungs. Triple lumen catheter insert through the subclavian vein. It is not associated with the pulmonary embolism, not associated with MI or heart failure, right? Next question here, a client with a multiple trauma and acute respiratory insufficiency is admitted to the intensive care unit. The physician orders arterial blood gas analysis to determine the client's ventilatory and gas exchange status. Because the client arms are in cuts from above the elbow to the fingertip. The arterial blood gas sample is taken from femoral artery. After sample is drawn, the nurse should apply continuous pressure to the puncture side. So how long it is good to push the pressure to the patient, right? So 
this examine asks the question about the blood gas analysis, arterial blood gas sampling. So arterial blood gas, it is the test to measure the oxygen level in the blood. It is the test to measure carbon dioxide level in the blood. It is also measure the body acid base level, right? Which is the usually in balance when we are healthy. Hmm? So now question, after we draw the blood, how long we have to push the pressure? Number one, three minutes, number two, five minutes, number three, eight minutes, and number four, 10 minutes. Before to answer this question, it is also important to remember your patient take any kind of anticoagulant or not, right? In the picture, see, the healthcare provider puts the pressure over the site. They said 10 minutes. So after a blood sample is drawn from the femoral artery, femoral, the picture is not a femoral. So the clue is here, femoral artery. So it is 10 minutes. But if any other artery, like the picture like this, tip of the finger, right? We maybe five minutes. So maintain the firm pressure on the puncture side, at least upper extremity, five minutes, but lower extremity of femoral artery, 10 minutes. So if the patient is in anticoagulant medication, we have to apply direct pressure over the puncture side for 10 to 15 minutes. And then we apply a firm pressure bandage or dressing. So firm pressure on the puncture side prevent the further bleeding and hematoma formation. What are the rationale? After blood sample is drawn from a femoral artery, the nurse should apply continuous pressure to the puncture side for 10 minutes to prevent bleeding. Applying pressure for shorter period which would, would, would not allow enough time for clotting to occur. The radial and brachial side rupture one to five minutes for continuous pressure. So it is important uh, to know. So two information we learn. In case of radial or brachial, five minutes. In case of femoral artery, 10 minutes. Next question, a nursing staff is divided over with uh, withdrawing care from a competent or chronically ill client. The nursing nurse manager should take which steps to meet the need for her staffs. So here is important, your patient is competent, chronically ill client. So the nursing care plan for chronically ill client, it is important to know. So first of all, let me go this one first. Contact the in, uh, Institutional Ethical Committee. Number two, arrange a meeting with the client family. Number two, three, ask the physician to meet with the staff. Number four, reinforce to the staff that the decision is the client to make. Correct answer is contact institutional ethics committees, right? So rationals say the institutional ethics committee can help the staff develop the strategies to resolve their ethical dilemma. 
the patient's bill of rights stated the client has the right to make decision about the care plan and to refuse recommended treatment. Arranging a meeting with the client family is inappropriate whether or not they are arranged with the client wishes. The physician must complete with the client wishes, right? So scheduling a meeting with the physicians is not beneficial to the staff. Reinforcing to the staff that the decision is the clients to make the dismissed to the staff concerned. So before to go, go next question, I want to tell you the, the patient who is a chronically ill, right? It is very important uh, nursing intervention or carry out for the patient who is a chronically ill condition. And also we, it is important to know how to take care of the patient who are chronically ill, right? So comprehensive plan of care is needed. So what is comprehensive plan of care? Is developed based on the patient's diagnosis. So chronic disease, what type of diagnosis, right? According to the patient's diagnosis, we make the care patient need. So prognosis, availabilities of family support, resources in the home environment and community after initial assessment is very important. And also ongoing assessment are done following the frequency of home visit in the plan of care. What next? A nurse prepare to perform postural drainage, right? And how should the nurse assert in the best position to facilitate the changing, uh, cleaning the lungs? So postural drainage, the question according about. So postural drainage, when you do, patient position is very important, right? So if you do not do this, it will be difficult to do this. So inspection. So if you do the postural drainage, best position for facilitate. So first of all, inspection, number two, chest X-ray, number three, arterial blood gas analysis and auscultation. Correct answer is auscultate. So in the three picture here we can see, right? So what should be the position? It should be depends on patient conditions or location of the disease. So it is important to know postural drain is a technique in which the patient assume one or more position that will facilitate the drainage of secretion from bronchial airway. And this procedure uses the gravity to move the secretion towards the trachea. So rational said the nurse should assess breath sound before doing the postural drainage to determine the area that need to drain it. Inspect chest X-ray and arterial blood gas analysis level are all assessment parameter that give good information about respiratory functions, but are not necessary to determine lung area requiring postural drainage. Next question here. 
if client with the asthma is receiving theophylline, also prepared to promote the bronchodilator, right? So if the patient uh, need to take theophylline, it is important to deal with them. So the treatment, first line of the treatment for asthma bronchodilator. Then we give, to prevent the acute asthma attack, we can give the inhaler steroid. If it is not enough, we go for theophylline. Theophylline has a very narrow therapeutic range. So it is important to monitoring the blood level of theophylline to prevent the theophylline toxicity. So they are saying, what are the clients serum theophylline level closely? The nurse knows that theophylline concentration falls within each range. Two to five, five to 10, 10 to 20 and 21 to 21 to 25. The correct answer is 10 to 20, right? So therapeutic serum, theophylline concentration range from 10 to 20 microgram per deal, ml. So values below 10 are not therapeutic. So this medication, the therapeutic index 10 to 20. So if it is more than 20, it is not medicine, it is poison. If medication less than 10, this medication will not work. So it is work when the concentration within 10 to 20. Concentration above 20, consider toxic. Concentration less than 10, consider non-therapeutic. Next question. A nurse is caring for a client experiencing an acute asthma. As I told you, asthma is a chronic disease, lungs disorder, characterized by narrowing the airway, the tubes which carry the air into the lungs that are inflamed, also constricted, and they cause the shortness of breath or wheezing and cough. When the asthma acute attack, we call acute exacerbation of chronic asthma, right? So this is the client stop to wheezing and breath sound are not audible because acute exacerbation. Wheeze change occur because the attack is over. The airway are no swollen, so swollen that no air can get through. The swollen has decreased, crackles have replaced wheezing. So correct answer say the airway are so swollen that no air can get through because acute attack of chronic asthma. So in that scenario, what we should do? So asthma can be managed with medication. Medication very depends on severity of asthma. The medication are admin through the inhaler or nebulizer form. So you, if you give oxygen or if you nebulize the patient, it is good for them. So the medication through the tablet help them manage the condition too, but take time. Inhaler is faster. So rational said during an acute asthma attack, wheezing may stop breathing sound become in 
audible because the airway are so swollen that air cannot get through. If the attack is over and swollen has decreased, there would be no more wheezing or less concern. We need less concern. Crackles do not replace wheezing during the acute asthma attack. So during the asthma, we will get the wheezing. Crackles are not during the asthma. So next to finish, I want to share some added sound. Hmm? So first of all, stridor. Stridor is an added sound we supposed to get over the trachea. If you put the stethoscope over the trachea, we can get the stridor. And stridor is a high pitch noise or louder during the inspiration. When patient has a stridor, it is indicate obstruction, right? Let me read it, stridor, upper airway over the trachea or foreign body airway causes the obstruction, we get the stridor. The other sound is a wrong high. So when we get wrong high, it is caused by secretion in the large airway, right? This part. Ronchi, larger airway, obstruction because of fluid, because accumulation in the large, larger airway. Ronchi is more common in case of COPD, constructive, obstructive pulmonary disease or pneumonia. Then wheezing. So wheezing, air move through the narrow or inflamed airway, right? It is bronchoconstriction or sputum inside the lungs. It is continuous musical sound. More common is the asthma. So effect bronchi, constriction, air trying to pass through the inflamed bronchioles or inflamed narrow bronchioles. More common asthma or bronchitis. The last one is here, the relays, rails. So it is common, also called crackles, small airway, fluid inside the lungs or fluid inside the alveoli. Alveoli is the functional unit of lungs. More common in pneumonia, also chronic heart failure. Some books say another sound is uh, plural rub. So plural rub, it is hard on inspiration, right? So next. So up to this today, if you practice all of the questions in this series, I believe it will help you. And if you practice every day, and if you pass our exit exam, we give the guarantee you will pass the licensing code as well.